On this week's episode of Make It With Calvin, we're gonna be talking about this. It's aluminum composite material, also known as dye bond. ACM has a bunch of names, but technically we're gonna be calling it aluminum composite because dye bond is a brand name, so we're gonna keep things generic here. I'm gonna talk about why I'm using this to make a lid for my Ultimaker 2. As most of you guys know by now, I am going to be eventually moving over to the dorms at San Francisco State University while I'm over there to get my Bachelor's of Science in Industrial Design. And much as I love my Ultimaker, I want to try and make the thing as quiet as possible, not only for anybody else who potentially I will be rooming with, but also just trying to make the machine more quiet in general. So if I'm running an overnight print, etc., it's not going to be so loud. So. The machine itself is not too bad, it's just the fans can get a little bit noisy over time. So what I decided to do is I'd always wanted to build a lid for the machine and for talking to people on Twitter they said yes, putting a lid on the machine does help cut the noise and an upside is it helps trap heat inside which is a very good thing if you're trying to print in ABS which I don't do very often but materials like nylon and whatnot do appreciate it and being that I don't really know how drafty or not or temperature wise how the rooms will be I figured it was a better option. So the material itself right here came from a really nice resource in the San Francisco area called Scrap SF, and I'm going to put a link to them in the description. They get all kinds of random things in, and this was one of them. It is the aluminum composite material that probably a sign shop or something like that dropped off. They had just some random sizes, and I didn't buy everything they had, but I definitely Got a good selection of the material from them thinking, gee, this would be perfect for building machine enclosures, maybe a UV chamber for my Moai, which I may or may not be able to get done while I'm still down here at my parents' house. But the point is, it's a very easy material to work with, and for that reason, that's why I like it. What it is, is a thin layer of aluminum on both sides, I'm guessing in this case no more than 10 thousandths thick, with a core of typically a high density polyethylene, a UHMW, an HDPE, something like that. So that makes the material very interesting to work with because you have the aluminum on the outside for durability, but you have the plastic core for the sake of weight. Now, one thing to keep in mind is they are using a pretty soft grade of aluminum here. I'm gonna guess it's probably 5,000 series, which is very easy to bend. So it's very easy to drop this and bend a corner. So just keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to cutting and drilling this, it actually cuts very easily with various tools. You can easily cut it with a CNC router, you could easily cut it with a table saw like what I did. You could very easily cut it with a bandsaw even. What is a common technique is on a router, it's to come along and cut a groove in the middle and you can literally bend the part into whatever shape you need. If you really wanted to be fancy, you could probably come along with like a 90 degree V bit and just make a couple of passes back and forth and then have it bend into a nice perfect angle. You can do that, it's totally up to you. But the point is, it's very easy to work with. Drilling holes is easy. Do keep in mind though that you do have the soft plastic core in there so when you're feeding it through a saw, don't dilly dally and don't run a dull blade. Neither the aluminum nor the plastic like that. But overall, it cuts very easily. I would recommend though, use a sharp table saw blade. One probably that has more teeth than less. Um, my dad's table saw blade somewhat coarse and a little bit on the dull side. It cut fine, but it definitely left slightly rougher than desired edges. But for this, it's perfectly fine. It doesn't really matter. Now when it comes to drilling it, same story, just keep a low um, drill speed and use a sharp bit and it goes through easily. Do note though that when you are deburring the material because it is so soft and it has that plastic core, Deburring it can be somewhat hard to get a really nice clean edge. So if you're gonna route this, I highly recommend just running a fast deburring pass. If you are gonna deburr it by hand, just take your time and maybe use a file instead of one of those burr whip tools. I used a burr whip which worked, but there's some edges where you might not be able to see very well, but it's a little bit rough on the edge where the burr whip started to actually cut in a little deep. And it was a little bit hard to correct for that, but overall it works pretty good. Now to join everything together, I've already pre-drilled holes in the parts and I'm going to 3D print some brackets so I can join the parts like such and mount the top on it. Now for securing it to the machine, I'm still not 100% sure how I'm going to do that yet. I am debating just setting it on the top or coming up with some kind of simple 3D printed strapping system. 
I'll figure that out when the time comes, but I hope this introduces you guys to aluminum composite material, which can be a little bit expensive, but if you can find, say, a sign shop or a supplier, ask them if they have any scraps. Be nice about it, but ask them if they have any scraps. If there's a place such as Scrap SF that's nearby you, go check and see if they ever get this stuff in. It's definitely something that I feel like people could actually use really well in the maker community, but it kind of just hasn't gotten the airtime that I think it does. And the, the irony is the front and back panel of my Ultimaker and the bottom actually are made from this material as well. So kind of tied in nicely. Hope you guys enjoyed this, learned something, and I'll see you here next time I make it with Calvin when I'm going to be back in SF. We're going to be hopefully assembling this thing, getting it installed on the printer, and seeing how well it works. So see you guys later. For those who are wondering, it is really, really hot down here. It's probably like at least in the 90s in here, and I'm roasting live. Fun.